And these people who have been granted Allah's friendship, what are their actions like? They are like this. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ The example of those people who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like a seed of grain which grows seven spikes. Imagine a seed. When it is buried in the soil, what happens? Eventually, it grows. And when it grows, how much does it produce? More than what it was before. So likewise, when a person spends in the way of Allah, it is as though he has buried a seed. He has buried a seed. Because when you give your wealth, when you put that money in the box, when you put that money in the hand of somebody else, it's gone. You don't see it anymore. Just like a seed that is buried. You don't see it anymore. It's hidden. But it is not destroyed. You have not killed your money. What is going to happen? Allah says it will grow into seven spikes. And in each spike will be a hundred grains. Seven hundred times it is multiplied. And Allah multiplies His reward for whom He wills. And Allah is all encompassing and knowing. Generally when we spend wealth, When we, for example, feed a hungry person, when we give some water in charity, when we plant a tree, when we say a good word, all of these things are good. They are all acts of charity. But remember that the reward for these acts of charity is how much? Just ten times more. But when we do something, when we do something like what is mentioned over here, spending in Allah's way, that when a person rises above any immediate gratification, he expects no worldly return. Rather, he is incurring worldly loss. When we give our wealth only for the sake of Allah, why? To strengthen, to serve the deen of Allah. Then how much is the reward? 700 times. It's not 10 times. How much is it? It's 700 times. Why? Because this kind of charity, this kind of spending is greatly honored by Allah. Because only a friend of Allah will spend for the deen of Allah. Think about it. Whose cause is it that you will promote? A stranger's cause? No. Someone whom you trust. Someone whom you support. Someone whom you love. So Allah's deen, Allah's deen, who will spend for the cause of Allah's deen, to strengthen the the deen of Allah, to promote the deen of Allah, to spread the deen of Allah. So for example, buying a book, buying a book and giving that. Or for example, paying for a flyer to be printed. Or for example, you know these lights that that, that we are using, the carpet that we're sitting on, this is all what? Fi sabilillah. Who will do it? The one who values the deen of Allah. The one who takes the deen of Allah personally. Think about it. Whose house is it that you will bring a decoration piece to? Your friend. Isn't it? Whose house is it that you will be concerned about the furniture? That you think that the sofas are getting old, they need to be replaced. This carpet is getting old, it needs to be replaced. Do you go and say that to a stranger? No. You go and say that to who? To your parents, their house, your sister, her house. And then you say, you need money? I'll get it. You need a lamp? I will bring a lamp. You need a chair? I'll bring a chair. You need a mirror? I'll get a mirror. Why? Because we take that personally. Allah's friends, the friends of Allah, they take the deen of Allah also personally. So what do they do? They spend in the way of Allah. And when they spend in the way of Allah, then Allah honors that spending. So much so that He will multiply the reward for them 700 times. Now the question is, why would a person spend in the way of Allah? Why would he spend for the strengthening, for the promotion of the deen? Because the person realizes, I need this deen. My children need this deen. My family needs this deen. The society needs this deen. This is a noble cause. This is a good cause. This needs to be promoted. This needs to be strengthened. So what will a person do? He will spend his money to support that cause. And when he will do that, Allah will honor his spending and he will multiply it many times more. He will cause it to grow and he will reward him multiple times for the spending that he has made. You see, there are some people who go out of their home 
Why? To earn dunya. And there are some other people who go out of their home to serve the deen of Allah. Allah honors that service also. So when you come here, make the intention of learning the deen of Allah so that you can learn something good, even if it's one thing. And you can share that knowledge with someone. Come with the intention of improving, of, of spreading goodness, of creating positive change. Because these efforts are appreciated by Allah. So such spending is appreciated by Allah, and efforts also which are made fi sabilillah, they are appreciated by Allah. And generally what happens, the effort that a person makes in the way of Allah, purely for his sake, they are also like planting a seed. Because the effort that a person makes in the way of Allah, what happens initially? No one acknowledges it. No one even notices it. But what happens? You do your part with sincerity. You go and plant the seed. It is up to Allah. Now Allah will make that seed grow into a full blooming tree. Right? And He will spread the goodness. Allah will bless that effort. And He will cause it to grow. So over here, those people who spend in the way of Allah, their spending is like planting a seed, like a grain, which grows into seven spikes, each spike bringing 100 grains. Those people who spend their wealth in the way of Allah, and then do not follow up what they have spent with reminders of it, or injury. ثُمَّ لَا يُتْبِعُونَ مَا أَنفَقُوا مَنًّا وَلَا أَذَا Such people, for what they have spent, Allah says, لَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ They will have their reward with their Lord, and there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. Why? Because what they gave, they gave it for the sake of Allah. And so, they don't need to remind of it, they don't need to show off about it, they don't need to hurt people because of what they've given them. Why? Because they gave it to who? Allah. And when we have given something to Allah, when we have made our investment with the one who is all powerful, then, then we can be free of fear, free of worry. Why? Because that investment will not go waste. It will definitely grow. Have you ever felt afraid after giving your money to someone? Even if it's just lending it to them? Have you ever felt fear? Maybe not money, something. Maybe your beautiful vase. Maybe a piece of furniture. When you lend it to someone, is there a fear that this will come back scratched? It will come back broken. Right? But what happens when you give something for the sake of Allah? When you give something to Allah, what will happen? Allah will make it grow. Then you need to be fear-free and worry-free. Kind speech and forgiveness are better than charity followed by injury. Meaning if you want to give, then give it properly. Not by hurting those whom you give to. Because sometimes what happens, we give a gift to someone, we give a charity in Allah's way, and then we keep reminding. By the way, remember that donation I gave? Or oh, because of that donation, please don't ask me for any registration fees. Or please allow me to park in the, uh, in the no parking zone. You know, we expect favors in return because we have given a small donation. Allah says, kind speech and forgiveness are better than charity followed by injury. If you want to give, give it properly. And if you want to cause hurt after giving, then it's better that you don't give. And Allah is free of need and forbearing. Meaning He does not need you to give to His servants and then cause them hurt. It would be better to not give and instead treat people well. Because you see, one is a person who gives his wealth and then he causes hurt. How? By constantly reminding of the favor that he has done. And the other is he who does not cause hurt, nor does he give money. Instead, he says good, pleasing, kind words. What is better? The second is better. قَوْلٌ معروف. Say good words. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O you who have believed, لَا تُبُطِلُوا صَدَقَاتِكُمْ Do not invalidate, do not destroy, do not cancel out your charities with reminders or injury, as does one who spends his wealth only to be seen by the people, and does not believe in Allah and the last day. His example is like that of a large smooth stone upon which is dust. And it is hit by a downpour, by a heavy rain. And that heavy rain, what does it do? It leaves the stone bare. It washes the dust away. Those who spend their wealth for show off, then what happens? Temporarily, yes, there is a display of good work. 
And what happens? They also feel instant gratification. Why? Because people have noticed it, people have acknowledged it, they have been praised for their charity. But then what happens after that? That charity is not accepted by Allah. No traces of that charity remain. It's like dust that settled and then it got washed off. No traces of that charity remain in the earth. Because the work in which is riya, the work which was done with riya, what is riya? To show off, then that work, that effort has no barakah, it has no blessing. They are unable to keep anything of what they have earned. And Allah does not guide the disbelieving people, meaning those who spend in order to show off. So there are three things that we must avoid when we spend anything for the sake of Allah. What are those three things? Man, ada, and riya. What is man? What is man? To remind of favor. To remind of favor. Remember I gave you this gift? Remember I gave that donation? Remember I brought this? Remember I volunteered this much? Reminding of favor. And sometimes we do this with children. That just because we fed them, we clothed them, we changed them, we keep reminding them all their lives. I used to stay up in the night because you were such a cranky baby. No, don't do man. Ada, what is ada? Causing hurt. Causing hurt to the other? How? By, by trying to control them. That, remember, I gave you this much money, now you better listen to me. Now you better conform to my rules. Causing hurt to people on giving them some charity. And thirdly, what we must avoid is riya, showing off. Why? Because if these three things are done after giving charity, then remember that that charity will not grow, will not multiply 700 times. Instead, what will happen? It will become like dust that is washed off. And the example of those who spend their wealth, ibtigha amardati Allah, seeking means to the approval of Allah, wa tathbitam min anfusihim, and assuring reward for themselves. People who spend in this way, Their example is like that of a garden on high ground, which is hit by a downpour, heavy rain. So what happens? It yields its fruits in double. The ground is fertile and the rain is also good. What will happen? The produce will be double. And even if it is not hit by a downpour, then a drizzle is sufficient. Little bit rain is sufficient. And Allah of what you do is seeing. What do we learn here? The work that is done to please Allah with full conviction, with certainty, that beat, with conviction that yes, ibtigha amardatillah, I want reward only from Allah. And with tathbeet, with firmness, with the certainty in heart that this is definitely a noble cause. Because what happens sometimes? We hesitate giving charity. We wonder if it's even a noble cause. We wonder if it's even going to help. No, when a person gives something to please Allah, to earn reward from Him, and the intention is also clear, I want the pleasure of Allah, then what happens? Even a small deed, what happens to it? It becomes huge. It becomes great. Because Allah causes it to grow immensely and He multiplies it many times more and places immense barakah in it. We learn Abu Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said that once a man came to the Prophet sallallahu with a camel. He, he brought a camel and that camel had a ring in its nose. A ring in its nose meaning it was ready, prepared. All right? Meaning it wasn't a, an untamed camel. It was a tamed camel. The ring is in its nose. It's ready. Anybody can, can sit on it and take it anytime. It's ready. So he brought this kind of a camel to the Prophet ﷺ saying that this is fi sabilillah. This is to be used for the deen of Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ said that this camel will bring him 700 ringed camels on the day of judgment. This man has brought only one camel. But on the day of judgment, he will get the reward of giving 700 camels. You see, charity was small. It was small, but it was done with conviction. It was done with certainty. It was done with sincerity. So what happened? That, that small deed became huge. And this is the barakah. Because when a person does something for Allah's pleasure, then what happens? 
there is barakah. We learn Asma bint Abi Bakr. She said that the Prophet ﷺ, he once passed by me while I was counting and weighing my belongings. Why was she counting them? Like for example, money, why do we count it? To make sure that yeah, all the hundred dollars are here. Yeah, all the five hundred dollars are here. Counting, counting. And she was also weighing. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Oh Asma, do not count. Or Allah will also count for you. Meaning if you start counting these things, then what will happen? Allah will also give it to you in limited number. You will never be content with the number that you have. She said that I never counted anything after the Messenger of Allah wasallam said that. And nothing came to me of Allah's provision. And never did it deplete except that Allah gave me more in its place. Every time I had something, I didn't count it. Okay, so let me check. Is it a, is it a hundred dina? Five hundred dina? Is it fifty uh, grams or is it a hundred grams? How much is it? She said, I didn't count. Whatever I got, I was happy with it. Whenever there was a chance, I spent from it. Every time I ran out of it, Allah gave me more in its place. Baraka. Baraka. Blessing. Because think about it. Allah is counting. Right? When we're spending something in His way, when we're giving something in His way, He's counting, His angels are counting. So when they're counting, why should we waste our time? Right? Spending our time counting. We should do what others are not doing. The Prophet ﷺ said that Allah gives special blessings to some of His servants in order to benefit His creation through them. Allah gives blessings to some of His servants. Why? In order to benefit the rest of the creation through those servants. So as long as the person spends, he continues to spend on the creation, then his blessings remain safe and secure. But if he withholds, then Allah also takes it away from him and he gives it to others. What does it mean? That whatever blessing we have, whether it is in the form of money, or it is in the form of intelligence, wealth, ability to teach, ability to advise people. What are these skills? What are these gifts? Allah has given them to us so that we benefit the creation. So if we continue to benefit the creation, these blessings will remain. Why? Because when we benefit others with what Allah has given us, this is a form of Gratitude. And what does Allah say? La in shakartum la azidannakum. If you're grateful, I will increase for you. But when a person holds the blessings of Allah back, he withholds them, he keeps them to himself, then what happens? Then what happens? Then what the, then Allah will take his work from who? Other people. Then what we have will be taken away from us. And opportunities will be given to others. And we will just be left looking. Remember, we as human beings, who are we? We are like channels. What is a channel? A channel is a constant supply. You know, it has a constant supply coming in. Right? And what is coming into the channel must go out of the channel. And if it doesn't go out of the channel, what will happen? That channel will get clogged. And when it will get clogged up, then the supply must also Sees. Isn't that so? So if we want our blessings to keep coming, to keep coming, then what do we need to do? Keep spending, keep giving. Those who keep giving, Allah also keeps giving them. And those who withhold, then Allah also withholds from them. In this example, what do we learn? That a little bit of charity also, Allah causes it to grow. Why? Because of sincerity. And when a person keeps giving in Allah's way, then Allah also keeps giving him more and more. Would one of you like to have a garden of palm trees and grapevines underneath which rivers flow, in which he has from every fruit? Meaning a garden in which he has fruit of every kind of produce. But then he is afflicted with old age. Meaning when the garden is ready, the fruit is ripe, the person is afflicted with old age, and he has weak offspring, children who are young and dependent, and it is hit by a whirlwind containing fire, and the entire garden is burnt up. Would any one of you like that? Thus does Allah make clear to you His verses that you might give thought. Meaning, if you do not like that your entire life's work is wasted in an instant, then you should not waste your deeds. How? Through man, adha, and riya. 
Otherwise, when you need your deeds most, they will not be there for you. When is it that we will need our deeds most? On which day? On the day of resurrection. So a big lesson we learn from this is that just as we take care of our hard-earned wealth, we must also pay attention to preserving our hard-earned deeds. Do we hide our precious belongings? Think about it. Do we hide our precious belongings? So for example, if you have gold, if you have jewelry, will you leave it out on the foyer table? Will you leave it out in the living room? No. What will you do? You will keep it in a box. Preferably a box in the bank. Why? Because it's so precious, it should not be displayed. If it's displayed, it might be lost. If it's lost, your hard-earned money jewelry will be gone. Do we put passcodes in our phone? Do we put passwords in our computers? Do we put passwords in our emails? Do we? Yes, we do. Do we have a lock to our house? Why? Because all these things are precious to us. We have earned them with a lot of hard work. And we do not want that somebody comes and snatches them away from us. Likewise, our deeds are precious. They are more precious than the riches of this world. And they are earned also through hard work. Then what is it that we need to do? Preserve our good deeds. How do we preserve them? By keeping them a secret between us and Allah. By not showing off. Because when we show off, it is like we have put our diamond jewelry in the middle of a busy living room, in the middle of a busy street. What will happen to it? Will it get ruined? Will it get damaged? Will it get stolen? Yes, it will. So deeds also will get damaged when a person shows off. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O you who have believed, spend from the good things which you have earned and from that which we have produced for you from the earth and do not aim toward the defective thereof. وَلَا تَيَمَّمُوا الْخَبِيثِ Do not intend to give defective things, impure things, bad things. Do not choose bad things that you have for charity. Rather, what is it that we should give in charity? That which we like for ourselves also. So do not aim toward the defective therefrom. Spending from that while you would not take it yourself except with closed eyes. And know that Allah is free of need and praiseworthy. So another rule is taught over here. That when you give, remember, you are giving to who? To Allah. So be shy of Allah and present only that which is best. Best does not mean that that which is beyond what you can afford best means the best that you can come up with the best that you can afford just like when we have to give a gift to somebody do we keep in mind the honor and the status that they have always we always keep in mind the status that they have so much so that if we do not have something good enough we will not give them a gift Isn't it so? We will wait for the time when we can get something good enough and then we will give it. So think, when we're giving sadaqah, when we're putting some clothes in charity, when we're giving some money, when we're bringing some furniture into a masjid, when we're bringing some food in for some iftar, to a party in the masjid for example, who is it that we are giving to in reality? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be shy over there and bring the best. And give only that which you would take for yourself. In a hadith we learned that once the Prophet ﷺ came out of the masjid and he had a stick in his hand at that time. And he, and he saw that a person had hung up a bunch of dates. Why had he hung up a bunch of dates? So that anybody who's hungry, he can come and eat it. It was charity. You know, food for the public. Anybody who's hungry, they can take it. People who come to the masjid, this is fi sabilillah. But those dates, they were dry and they were bad. So the Prophet ﷺ, he began striking that, that branch with his stick. And he said, I wish that the one who gave the sadaqah had given something better than this. For the one who gave these dry, bad dates will eat dry, bad dates on the day of resurrection. So remember, whatever we give is what we will get back. So we need to give the best in the way of Allah. Shaytan threatens you with poverty. He tells you if you give the best, then you will have nothing left. Allah says this is from Shaytan. And he orders you to immorality, while Allah promises you forgiveness from him and bounty. And Allah is all-encompassing and knowing. يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ He gives wisdom to whom he wills. What is wisdom? The ability to make the right decision at the right time. What is it that I should spend now for this cause, at this place? 
Allah gives this wisdom to whomsoever He wills. And whoever has been given wisdom has certainly been given much good. And none will remember except those of understanding. This is why a person who has been given knowledge and he acts upon that knowledge, a person who has been given wisdom and he uses that wisdom, then that person is worth envy. He's worth envy. And whatever you spend of expenditures or make of vows, indeed Allah knows of it. And for the wrongdoers, there are no helpers. If you disclose your charitable expenditures, that is good. But if you conceal them and give them to the poor, it is better for you. And He will remove from you some of your misdeeds thereby. وَيُكَفِّرُ عَنْكُمْ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ He will remove your sins because of your charity. And Allah with what you do is fully acquainted. So it is clarified here that charity can be given publicly. Also, it can be given publicly if the intention is correct. Meaning the intention should not be to show off. Now the thing is that certain forms of charity, you can give in private. It is possible. So for example, you're giving money. You can give it privately. You can give a donation anonymously. You can do that. You can bring food into the masjid and nobody will find out. Just put it and leave. You can set up the masjid before people come. Right? Or you can clean up when nobody's there. People will not find out. This is an act of righteousness. This is an act of charity. Work fi sabilillah that can be done privately. But then there are some other good works which cannot be done privately. Meaning when you do them, they will definitely be seen. Like for example, if you want to go and help out at an Islamic event, you're volunteering. Can you tell all the volunteers, please go away because I want to work in private to keep my intention sincere? You can't do that. Likewise, if you're teaching somebody something good, can you do that privately? No, you can't. Because of course, when you're sharing that ilm, others are listening, others are reading, others are studying. So these things you cannot hide. So what does it mean? That just because an act of righteousness, an act of charity cannot be done in private, it should not be done? No, it should be done. But just check your heart. Well, qalbu mutawajjihun ila Allah. Is the heart directed to Allah? Is the intention sincere? Because if the intention is sincere, then that is good then that deed is beautiful. Why? Because it will encourage and motivate other people to do that good also. But for sure, remember that secret sadaqah has its own benefits. So while we do give sadaqah openly, we must also try to perform good deeds secretly, such that nobody finds out, no person finds out. This is a secret between us and Allah. You know, for example, these sheets that we're sitting on, sometimes we find them clean. Somebody came, washed them, put them, we don't even know who did it, secretly, privately. Sometimes there are bathrooms cleaned up, dried up, who did it? Allahu A'lam. This is a secret matter between Allah and the servant. The Prophet ﷺ said that secret charity extinguishes the anger of the Lord. So if ever you feel far from Allah, if ever you feel that there is a sin between you and Allah, if ever you feel that Allah is angry with you because of which you're not able to do the good that you could do before, you're not able to even pray on time, you're not able to continue with your recitation of the Qur'an, a sin has come in and you're feeling distant from Allah, you feel Allah is angry with you, how do you extinguish that? By giving charity secretly. Give some sadaqah and let no one know about it. Not even your husband. Not even the person who is next to you. In a way that your left hand does not know what the right hand has given. Not upon you, O Prophet ﷺ, is responsibility for their guidance. But Allah guides whom He wills. And whatever good you believers spend is for yourselves. And you do not spend except seeking the countenance of Allah, seeking the face of Allah. وَمَا تُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا بَتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ Every time you give sadaqah, keep this in mind. I'm giving this. I'm drawing closer to Allah. Because I want to see Allah. I want to see His beautiful, noble face. وَمَا تُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا بَتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ And whatever you spend of good, it will be fully repaid to you, and you will not be wronged. Charity is for the poor, who have been restricted for the cause of Allah, unable to move about in the land. Why? Because of their work. Because there are some people who take the work of Allah as full time. They take the service to the deen of Allah full time. So if they're doing that full time, when will they go and earn money to fulfill their needs? 
Because each person has needs. So when will they have the ability to do that? So for example, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, there were so many companions who lived in the masjid, who would not go and work. Why? Because the whole time, what were they doing? Learning, learning, learning. Months would go by, and they would not have the time to go and make a single business transaction. Why? Because for example, the Prophet ﷺ, when he went for the battle of Tabuk, it took almost two months. Almost two months. And that was the time of harvest. Now imagine, if a person is going out in the way of Allah, when is he going to have time? Because each person has 24 hours a day. Each person has seven days a week. Not more than that. So the time that they have, they're giving it for the deen of Allah. Allah says, giving it to them, that is the best form of charity. You see, there are two kinds of things that we can do. Either we should become of those who are working fi sabilillah, who are, who are working for the deen of Allah. Or we should be of those who are helping that cause. How are we helping that cause? Financially. Because when these two forces, when these two forces come together, when these two efforts are combined, people and money, then what will happen? Then the deen of Allah will advance. But if there are people who are constantly working, but there's no money, then what will happen? How long will they stay hungry? How long will they not pay the bills? How long will they not feed their family good good food? So th- these are human needs. Likewise, if there is a lot of money, but there are no people to give their time. Today we have a shortage of both talents, people, as well as money. People who do have the skills, they'd rather do something else. They, they don't want to spend their time for the cause of Allah. And people who do have money, they'd rather spend that money on their own luxury, on their own, uh, on their own ease and comfort and enjoyment, on their pleasure. We see that the Prophet ﷺ, the reason why he was successful, the Sahaba, the reason why they were successful is because they combined both of these efforts, the money and the skill. So Allah says, charity is for the poor who have been restricted for the cause of Allah, unable to move about in the land due to their work. An ignorant person would think them to be self-sufficient. An ignorant person thinks, oh yeah, they've got a lot of money, they're very rich, because of their restraint, because they don't beg. But you will know them by their sign. You will recognize the need on the face. They do not ask people persistently. And whatever you spend of good, indeed Allah is knowing of it. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَةً Those people who spend their wealth in Allah's way, by night and by day, secretly and publicly. How do they give charity? Open charity, secret charity, in the night, in the day. Now think about it. Perhaps you did not give charity in the night. Now make sure you give charity in the day. If you give charity in the day, now make sure you also give some form of charity in the night. Because look at what is mentioned over here. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ They spend in the night. وَالنَّهَارِ They spend in the day. سِرًّا They spend secretly. وَعَلَانِيَةً And also openly. Meaning, when it comes to charity, then there is no restriction of time, of day, of place, of mode. Whenever the opportunity comes up, they give charity. Even if it's a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. Even if it's a little bit, they want their share in, in, in noble causes, in good causes. Allah says, فَلَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ Then for them is their reward near their Lord. وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ And there shall be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. What does this mean? That at the time when people will be afraid, those who give charity will be free of fear. At a time when people will be worried, those who give charity will be free of worry. And what is that day of fear and worry? It is the day of judgment. The Prophet ﷺ said, ظِلُّ الْمُؤْمِنِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ صَدَقَتُهُ The shade of a believer on the day of judgment is his charity. Meaning a believer will be in the shade of his charity on the day of judgment. Remember that man who brought one camel? Now imagine on the day of judgment, there are 700 camels for him. Is he alone? He's not alone. Does he have plenty? Yes, he has plenty. Will he be afraid? No. Will he be worried? No.